Wouldn't it be amazing if we could figure out where seals and sea turtles go after they've been rehabilitated? Where do they go after release? How fast are they swimming? How deep are they diving? And how well are they surviving after they've received crucial treatment? We can actually learn all about the lives after rehabilitation of seals and sea turtles by tagging and tracking. There's a couple of different ways that we can tag or track these animals. Let's take a look at how we conduct this science with sea animals. First, we're going to look at passive tags, which do not send data, don't record data, but they include pit and flipper tags. Let's take a look at flipper tags first. Flipper tags are just what they sound like, tags applied to the flippers. Flipper tags are made of durable plastic material and are attached to the hind flippers, both left and right for sea turtles, or just the left or right for seals by using a piercing gun similar to the type used for piercing human ears. Only sea turtles that meet the size requirements receive these kinds of tags. All seals at the National Marine Life Center will receive a flipper tag. The purpose of a flipper tag is to be able to identify the animal when seen or found. This is especially helpful for identifying animals seen at a distance, and it is only for identification. This type of tag, being passive, it will not send out the location of an animal, and it won't record the location or other data for the animal. The next type of tag we're going to talk about is a passive integrated transponder, or PIT tag. Obviously, another type of passive tag that won't record or store or send data. This type of tag is about the size of a grain of rice and is injected into the shoulder muscle of a sea turtle. Seals at the National Marine Life Center don't get pit tags. This tag is red using a scanner in order to identify the tag's unique code and therefore identify the animal. This is just like the microchip your family pet might have. Passive tags don't collect or store data. This tag is just for identification purposes if the animal is found again. All sea turtles at the National Marine Life Center will be given pit tags before they are released. Now let's talk about active tags and tracking devices. The tracking device or active tag that we use at the National Marine Life Center is a satellite tag, which does record and send data. Satellite tracking can be on one of two different systems, either the Argo satellite system or GPS satellite systems. The National Marine Life Center uses satellite tags that use the Argos system, which focuses on latitude and longitude coordinates. GPS, or Global Positioning System satellite tracking, utilizes satellites just as well but uses them to triangulate the position of the transponder. Both systems are effective in locating the geographical point of fixation or the location of the animal without someone having to recapture the animal or follow it around. Satellite tags allow us to track the location of an animal without having to recapture or follow them. Different types of satellite tags record the location at different intervals of time. More advanced tags can record more information like depth, water temperature, even velocity, which is the speed and direction of the animal. Satellite tags are applied with different bonding materials to either the turtle's carapace, top shell, or the coat or fur of the seal at the National Marine Life Center. This tag is expensive and costs upwards of $3,300. This cost doesn't even include the data plan. The National Marine Life Center is able to study seals and sea turtles through satellite tags thanks to generous donations from the public and sponsors. Because the National Marine Life Center is only able to tag a few seals each year or sea turtles, we prioritize the cases that will be unique case studies after release. I'd like to show you an example of one of these cases that was studied by the National Marine Life Center. Meet Jones the Harbor Seal. 
Jones came to the National Marine Life Center for the first time in 2018, suffering from something known as otitis media. Otitis media is a severe inner ear infection that can cause rupturing of the inner ear drum. Being that seals are deep diving animals, their ears and their sense of balance are incredibly important to their survival. To diagnose otitis media in seals, we perform a radiograph or an x-ray and after injecting a dye into the ear canal, we can then take an x-ray and see if that dye has penetrated the eardrum. If it penetrates the eardrum, that means that it has ruptured because of the illness. This is Jones receiving that radiograph. Our lead veterinarian, Dr. Rogers Williams, looks at the radiograph here. He determines that Jones does indeed have a ruptured eardrum. We come up with a treatment plan and give Jones plenty of time to rest and heal. Then, before his release, we set him up with a satellite tracking device. Jones and Otitis Media had other plans, though. Jones re-stranded in Maine a few months after his first release, still showing symptoms of Otitis Media. He was released again after a second stay at National Marine Life Center for more rehabilitative care to treat Otitis Media. He was released once again, and in total, his satellite tag sent data to us for eight months. This is a fairly long period of time given that seals shed their fur annually and these satellite tags may not stay on for more than a few months. Here we're looking at the data from Jones's satellite tracking device. If we were looking to determine how his health might have been or be impacted by the otitis media, where might we suspect to see those pointed plots of latitude and longitude? Would they be out across the ocean? Or would they be hugging the shoreline very closely? Think about if diving would be uncomfortable for him. Would he be out far away from the shoreline or close in to the coast? What does the data that you see here interpret as? I agree. This shows that Jones is doing well, even with otitis media after it is healed. Eventually, we stopped receiving the data from Jones's satellite tracking device. Later on, though, we were lucky to receive a photo taken under IFAW's National Marine Fisheries Service permit, where they spotted our friend Jones, shown here with the red arrow, hauled out amongst not other harbor seals, but gray seals that were between two to four times his size. He looked fat and happy. Satellite tagging allows us to get a glimpse into the lives of animals that we can't otherwise follow or track. There's a whole lot we can learn from the tagging and tracking of animals. And it's not just seals. We're able to track mammals, birds, reptiles, marine species, and there's a lot to discover. Here's a few examples of what's been discovered about marine species thanks to tagging and tracking. From a Smithsonian Ocean article called Tagging and Tracking Animals Underwater, written by Emily Frost, after tracking six manta rays, scientists learned they spend most of their time close to shore, within 200 miles of it actually but only 12% of that time was spent in what we might consider safe spots, marine protected areas. This article also shared the fascinating discovery that after satellite tracking of leatherback sea turtles, it was discovered that the leatherbacks in the Atlantic Ocean had two swimming speeds, a slower and a faster speed, whereas the leatherback turtles of the Pacific Ocean swam at one medium speed. You can visit MoveBank to see real data from real tracking devices. See if your favorite animals are being tracked or tagged. Thank you so much for joining us to learn a little bit more about the tracking and tagging of the National Marine Life Center patients during rehabilitation and what satellite tracking and tagging in all of its forms does for the science and conservation of species.